You're watching Advisor Talk with Frank LaRosa. It's the only podcast offering unfiltered guidance and direct advice for anyone in the financial services and wealth management industry. Learn more today at EliteConsultingPartners.com slash podcast. And now, here's your host, Frank LaRosa. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Advisor Talk with Frank LaRosa. I am Frank LaRosa, your host, and uh, I'm excited for you to join our conversation um, as everybody knows that listens, my, my goal of these conversations every every week is to really talk about uh, current events and things that affect uh, you as a financial advisor. And uh, I'm really excited today to have a, a special guest on the, on the call with me today, um, Adam Antoniatis, who's the CEO of Soterra Financial Group. And he's been around a long time. Um, he spent his, his whole career pr pretty much um, in the independent financial service space. So he brings a really great perspective on on where things are, where they've come from, where he sees them going, and so I'm I'm really excited for for you as our listener to uh, to you to you know listen in on our conversation. Uh, Adam, thank you for uh, for being on this call. I really appreciate it. How's it going? Uh, go going well, thanks, Frank, and and uh, thank you. I appreciate you um, giving me the airtime. Although hearing you talk about you know how long I've been in this business, I'm starting to feel old here. So. <laughs> Right. Well, I didn't use. I just said a while. I didn't use any any particular uh, <laughs> time while, frame. So it's it's been it's been a long while. Uh, it it is funny, you know. You hear people talk about, you know, they've been in the business a long time, and it's and it's and it's less than you know someone's been in less than ten years or whatever, and you just realize how little that individual has gone, how little that individual has gone through. Sorry, is my phone ringing? Um, and it's just a matter of. Um, what's going to come next. And so, uh, you know, just want to get into with you really just have a conversation about what I, th what I think is happening right now. Um, you know, listeners, before I, b before we get into where we want to go with this thing, I thought maybe um, because of Adam's background, Adam, you just maybe give the listeners a little bit of color on, on where you came from and what your background was. And so they have some context about uh, why I was so excited to have you on the call. Yeah. Um, well, it's, I appreciate the kind words, that's for sure. But started in this business straight out of school. I think it was uh, 87 or 86, something like that. I can't remember. I've lost track at this point. Back in England, right? Um, uh, and believe it or not, they they had what you might think of as independent contractor business back in England. I uh, was there through, um, I think, three years through 89. Uh, moved to the foreign currency markets for three years, um, and then and then eventually found my way uh, out to the states um, in in uh, in an independent firm, um, and and really have sort of fallen in love with that part of the business, and have been here all along through different types of independent firms. By that I mean different ownership structures, different um, you know sort of sponsors. Uh, been had a firm that was owned by Wells Fargo, lots of private equity owned firms and, and a couple of public ones, right? So, so we've been a part of uh, the full spectrum, if you like, but great. in so this you, space for a long time. <laughs> right. So uh, that's great. So you give some perspective. So why don't we just get into, uh, just jump into one of the, sort of the main topics since, uh, you know, uh, unfortunately the topic du jour, right? And that is uh, COVID and what happened and, um, you know, every firm, um, handled it differently. And I say every firm, I'm talking about wirehouse firms, you know, W2 firms, independent firms. Um, I want to talk to you about what you guys did and how, and how Satera not only um, showed some leadership with their advisors, but what do you, how are you coaching and talking to your advisors about how to use technology, Zoom technology and all this stuff really to, get over the hump, right? Because a lot of advisors that haven't been in the business in a long time never went through a crisis. So September 11th was a crisis, right? The market, the mortgage crisis. There's a lot of advisors that are successful today had never been through really any major issue, right? So how did you guys guide them through uh, this type of crisis when it first happened? Yeah, it's, it's actually a, a really good question because everyone's got to remember that um, you know, when, when, the, when the pandemic hit, um, or I should say when it started to play out in a way that restricted the business, it really started with a, with a 150 basis point hit on uh, interest rates, right? Which, which the firms like ours is, is, is sort of painful, as everybody I'm sure knows. 
Um, so, so we were sort of felt left dealing with not only a PL hit, um, but also this idea that, hey, we didn't know where this was going to begin and end, um, what sort of the long term effects. The market was off 20%, if you remember. Uh, and, and, and we sort of had to, the most important thing for us to focus on was the challenges that advisors were facing, right? So we sort of had a choice, right? Focus outwards and see what everybody else is doing or uh, and and see if we can find opportunity there or stay in with our in, in internal advisors and focus on their situation and their problems that they're sort of running into because ultimately if we could take care of those it has it's completely aligned with what we're uh, what's happening to us and that's what we really did right we we immediately um, enacted a team that said how can we anticipate the challenges that advisors were facing um, and frankly, that continues today. And, and right. that materialized into three different ways. The first thing is, they don't really know how to talk to their clients about COVID. People forget that financial advisors mm -hmm. are often the trusted advisor, right? It's often the person that the client goes to. When we, I'll give you an example. When the Experian um, uh, breach on data, you remember that? Uh, it was the number one question that our advisors yeah, yeah, got, yeah. right? Um, and they're not identity theft uh, experts, but we needed to equip them with that type of information. So just getting them to a place where they could talk to their clients about COVID based on what we knew was really, really important. How did they sort of uh, you know, communicate with them? How did they put information out there? How did they sort of keep them uh, comfortable about where the market was going? Uh, making sure they knew that this is about uh, it's about the, the the playbook, right? Staying in the market, staying invested, not reacting to the 20% decline. All those things were really important. So getting that sort of communication framework, helping them, you know, with their teams, that was step one. Step two uh, was really around, okay, there's an economic impact to you. So how are you going to navigate that? Are you going to furlough people? Are you going to have to lay people off? What tools are available to you? How can we help you? Um, and of course, you know, that sort of the, the stimulus was a big part of that equation. Uh, so helping them navigate that became um, a, a critical part. Um, and then, and then look, independent advisors, uh, people forget um, they are first and foremost small business owners. And, and applying that yeah. lens to that conversation um, really starts to inform, uh, you know, what they're dealing with. If a market's down 20%, so is a lot of their revenue. So how are we going to help bridge that gap? Uh, and, and um, a, you know, a tremendous amount of energy started to pivot into the growth side of the business, right? Which is how do you capture assets in motion? We know not, that not all client advisors engage their clients during times of disruption. Yeah, they put, their head, they, put their head, they put their head in the sand. They don't want to take the phone call. It's often on the employee side, right? Because they don't have the same challenges that an independent advisor who has business bills to pay has to deal with. So just making sure that we help them position themselves to, um, to sort of capture market share as assets were moving was important. Um, but look, to your point on technology, um, we, we really did. There was really two or three pieces of technology that, that carried the day. Um, we delivered everything digitally because it gets to people um, quicker. Uh, the first thing was getting up and running on Zoom. Um, you know, we didn't sort of stop and say, we want to make sure it's embedded in our platform. We just got them the discount, got them the mechanism to get it up and running because it was important for them to talk to their clients, right? right that right. was step one. Step two was um, uh, getting end-to-end -end lead generation um, sort of processes up and running uh, through a, a, a technology, a, a solution we call Marketing Central. It's a fully digitized marketing process that has turnkey lead generation programs and referral programs, right? So that was a big, a big part of it. Um, and then ultimately, you know, um, how do they run their business? What are the things they're doing to run their business on a day to day? And how can we help them with that? that information, whether it's client ready calls on the markets or, um, or experts on, on uh, you know, 
how pandemics uh, work. Uh, we brought in someone from American funds to sort of talk to all the advisors. He was a pandemic expert. Uh, he sort of helped um, uh, you know, create two or three ways in which to engage a client and talk to them about it. Because clients are panicking at that time, right? They don't yeah. know what to expect. So just tooling the advisor with those types of issues. And then, and then to me, the most important thing of all, yeah, you commented on a lot of advisors have not seen this type of disruption before. I don't think anyone's seen this type of disruption. Right, right, before. exactly, yeah. But, but, but they had seen bad markets, right? So what we did was we went to our most senior advisors, the ones that lived through, you know, all one. Um, and if you're as old as I am, 87, right? And, uh, and, and then 07 and 09, 08 and 09. And, and we put them up on a, what we call face-to-face. -face. So we got our best advisors, we got them in front of the, the whole field. And we said, okay, you know, share your wisdom. And look, we know one thing, advisors learn best from advisors. And, and just helping them, uh, having them calm the troops, making them feel like, okay, this will get better. Giving them that sort of perspective on how to interact and how to show up on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, I think was massively valuable. Um, but look, here's the really, the, 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 from a strategic standpoint, here's what was re really important. To enable that and to fund that, because it costs a lot of money to do this. Yeah. We really had to make choices about what we were gonna stop doing, particularly in the wake of the impact of interest rates. So we started, um, you know, making choices about things that we were going to de-emphasize, right? Anything that didn't service the advisor, we shut it down, stopped working on it. Uh, and it's about priorities and it's about focus. Uh, and our view was this was a time to not worry about our plan and to start worrying about advisors. Uh, and look, we sort of lent into the problem and I, and I feel really good because it's, it's actually changed our strategy. And, and that's really helpful, I think. Do you, uh, we're, we're just to jump around a little bit, but I'm just curious as you talk about changing your strategy, right? And and by the way, um, I, you're talking about your uh, your marketing the, your marketing group. Um, for those that are listening, if they want to DM me, uh, you can DM me, Frank LaRosa, that elite. We actually had, I read today, because I'm, I'm I'm preparing for a, 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 a live next week about growing your business. And I actually uh, got a great piece from from you guys uh, the, the best ways to ask for referrals and how to make it successful. Um, I, I, I was reading through it and I'm like, this is all, it's all great stuff. And it really categorized each area. Um, you know, if you're an advisor and you're, and you're struggling with, as you, you, you were, you were an advisor, I believe also, you know, there's a fear in terms of asking for referrals and you read this thing and it really gets you comfortable with asking for referrals. Uh, so yeah. You guys uh, will be able to send that out for anyone that has any interest listening. So, um, but when you talk about strategy, uh, we'll jump around a little bit. In in 2018, um, there was a there was a, a an ownership change with with Cetera. And um, for those of you that don't know, those, so so GenStar, which is a private equity firm, uh, purchased Cetera uh, for I guess north of 1.7 billion dollars. And uh, a lot of people were hesitant about you. what. The, Allegedly, that? North allegedly, allegedly, right? <laughs> allegedly, right? I, I, I haven't seen the documents, so I'm only using what I've read. Um, but you know, the one of the big things about that, uh, about that deal was that it was, it was all about top line revenue and, 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 the, and, and helping. They were really interested in helping you and, and your team grow the advisor top line revenue. So it was great. How, how did they function during this crisis as a, as a great partner to you? Um, in terms of the, their not only their money, right, their capital, um, but just their uh, just their general resources. Yeah, um, look, I think um, you're you're teasing out a really important point, which is not all private equity firms are created the same. And I'm not saying one's bad or one's one's good. And you've seen um, several at this point, so it's interesting. Yeah, and I've seen both ends of the spectrum. There's there's those players that are sort of all about expense management, right? They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna take out every possible sort of piece of fat, um, and and drive P and L profitability by sort of bringing down uh, average cost of service type of thing, right? And um, and you know that's so it's not a lot of fun. I can tell you, I've lived it. 
um, and, and 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 to me, it doesn't it doesn't create um, alignment with the end client and the advisor because often what you're cutting are services, right? Um, it, it, on the other side of the spectrum, you've got you've got people that are that have got a growth playbook. Uh, and, and if you look to the history of firms, of private equity firms, you can see what they do. They've got a pattern. They repeat that playbook over and over again, right? It is the proverbial smart money per se, right? Um, and you know, when we when the company changed ownership, we went through a bake-off, what they call a bake-off, right? They also, yeah. we had 19 different firms start in the process. Um, and the one thing that uh, stood out, you do management presentations with just about all of them, one thing that stood out about GenStar is they spent five minutes talking about expense management and you know, five hours talking about how you were gonna grow and what levers were available right, to be able to pull in order to drive growth. And the importance of that conversation is it has an aligning effect with everybody in the, in the sort of ecosystem, right? The advisor, the consumer, the, um, uh, you know, the employees, the shareholders, everyone sort of gets on the same um, path. Uh, and that's, and that's um, you know, that was uh, important. It was uh, the big, that's why we picked them, I should say. It was sort of the first time that their uh, commitment to that was tested, right? The business yeah. has been growing nicely before that. Yeah, right. And I'm, I'm pleased to say um, that, look, uh, I would say that GenStar is, it really truly is smart money. They're in the top, you know, decile across the world in terms of performance for the last however many years since inception, I think. Um, and uh, I will tell you that the biggest, uh, uh, it, we, we, we basically, they asked the question, do you have the expense figured out? Uh, and we said, we've got a program, we've got a plan. Uh, we're gonna execute against it. We know what we're gonna stop doing in order to fund what we're gonna start doing. Uh, and, and that, frankly, that was the last time they wanted to talk about it. They're all about how are we gonna take advantage of the opportunity. Uh, more importantly, they were really supportive of our pivot away from, you know, m and um, You know, we sort of, uh, it, we're obviously always in the market for recruiting, but, we, but it wasn't number one priority through the pandemic, right? The beginning right. anyway. It yeah. was really all about uh, making sure our installed base of advisors, uh, the guys that were with us for a while, right, that were properly taken care of. Um, and, and look, they, they've got an incredible, uh, they call them strategic advisor board, which are industry leaders um, uh, who have been there, done that, and have, 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 you know, got the trophies to show it, so to speak, and just given us access to that, that, those capabilities to help us make good decisions, uh, it's second to none. Uh, so look, the partnership is great. We, we feel really good about, um, uh, we really got it right. Uh, I can tell you, I haven't always got it right uh, in, in that world. Um, and I, I subscribe to one very important uh, sort of factor. When I want to do business with someone, I want to be able to take them home to my family, right? I want to be able to feel good about the person I'm doing business with. Uh, and I'll tell you, these guys have done nothing but show up the right way. And ultimately, uh, you know, talk is cheap and actions speak louder than words. Um, and I will tell you that these guys are about as good as they come. Awesome. Great. So when we talk about strategy, we'll stay on the topic of strategy and sort of the, the um, industry change. There's been a lot of talk um, about, and I'll, I'll just throw out, a, you know, the one of probably your biggest, biggest competitors, uh, LPL recently rolled out this new model, which is an employee model, right? So there's just all this talk about capturing the, the, the retail advisor. One, one of the things that's come out of this, this COVID is you have advisors that have been sitting home, their retail, they never thought they could be an independent advisor, but all of a sudden they're independent. They just didn't re realize it because they're at home for the last six months running their business, but they're, you know, they're getting paid 38%, right? They haven't heard from their manager in three weeks and whatever. So there's this there's this um, competition out there right now to go capture those people, right? Um, and with LPL's new model as the this employee model, I, I'm curious if you if there's been conversations about, hey, look, is that a direction we want to go in, or is there some alternative type of direction 
that you see uh, happening with your with with your firm? Yeah, it, it, another great question. Look, um, at its core, uh, you, you're aware of our own design, but maybe for the, the listeners, um, we are engineered to deal with specialty markets, smaller communities, right? So even though we've got 8,000 or so advisors, maybe a little less, um, we go to market in, in very specific communities, uh, banks and credit unions, financial institutions. Uh, we've got a business that that's all it does. Um, uh, tax professionals, CPAs and tax professionals. We have a business and a brand that that's all it does. We've got the traditional ensemble and in, uh, sole proprietor type um, uh, model. And then we've got the large enterprises, right? Super OSJs, you might want to call them. And these businesses sort of stand on their own. And what it does is it customizes the way we go to market. Uh, well, like early last year, we we engaged in a, uh, we acquired a company called Foresters. Um, it was sort of more centered in the fund and annuity world, uh, but its profile was not unlike uh, uh, what you're seeing, uh, what, what's called the breakaway market now. And I think that's what they, they reference in that, in that solution that LPL uh, created. So we already have a business in that. We've got 40 uh, locations that we host a um, uh, uh, sort of, uh, we, we provide what you might think of as office services, right? Uh, advisors are still independent. They still get a, a high payout. Uh, obviously there's an economic sort of uh, reform, uh, reform I think that has to happen. They got to rent that space from us for lack of a better term, right? Um, and uh, we're already in that space. Um, so I don't, you sh people shouldn't, expect us to to declare that we're launching something new i would just say that look i think this the importance of this business is understanding what the advisor is pursuing okay and making sure that you're not trying to jam them into a place that isn't consistent with their where they want to go and our communities are built to make sure that that doesn't happen if you're not a fit for a particular model we, we We've got others available to you and we want you to be happy going forward. We want to be aligned and we want to make sure that we're delivering against your expectations. So, so I sort of think I'm already in that market. Um, I, I, um, I don't, right. I don't plan to uh, sort of bit, make a big launch and a big hurrah. Uh, I'd rather look at every opportunity that comes in uh, with your help, with the help of our, our, our business development team, with the hope, the help of our brand leaders, our, our presidents and CEOs, right, to, to sort of assess where the right place is for that advisor. Uh, and look, too many of our firms like ours don't spend enough time listening. They spend too much time talking about where the advisor should go. And um, for us, that's, that's fundamentally, when you really want to drive a growth agenda, you have to first stop and listen to the advisor and understand what's important to them where they want to go with their business or their practice if they're, if they're in a warehouse, right? Um, and, then, and then making sure that you can deliver your platform in a way that's relevant to them is, is really, really critical, right? And I think fundamentally that's a difference between how we operate, how the rest of the world operate, uh, uh, their the typical firm. You know, yeah, uh, I, I like to say that um, sure. LPO is in the tallest skyscraper, uh, they're the biggest in the in the independent space, right? And 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 their model is you can get to our our, our building any way you want. You can come up the stairs, through the elevator, land with a helicopter on the top. We've got a solution for you. And look, it's a great company. Don't get me wrong. Um, we sort of have a different approach. We've got all the capabilities that 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 high rise has. Right? Maybe not as you know, it, it, it's maybe not as tall, but we've got every type of service that they have, okay? The question is, how do we deliver that service? And, and I think fundamentally, through this COVID experience, we've really lent into the idea is we've got to go ask the advisor what it is they need, and then we've got to bring our solution to them in a way that matters to them. And, and uh, we did that by putting a whole right. series of, a whole new... Um, a group called growth officers. That's all they do, right? They talk to advisors, help uh, try and understand what the advisor needs, where they're going with their business, and, and then make sure that we're deploying our assets or our, 
our value proposition in a way that that is relevant to the advisor. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, no, totally. So that, that brings up my really my last question, right? And that is talking about where, where advisors are going. Some of the other dynamics that we've seen coming out of COVID is some advisors are just saying, hey, you know what, you know, I'm sort of done. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, I'm at a certain age and I'm not going to be uh, judgmental on, on any age. But some advisors just say, hey, I've been, this is my third crisis I've been through. I, I don't want to do it again. Um, and I think that um, that's, a, that's something that ha you have to listen to the advisors, right? W w have you seen that spike at, at Cetera? And, and if so, you know, what's your, how are you providing a solution to them? Yeah, um, it, it's it, it's interesting. Um, I, I don't know that we've seen an outsized uh, sort of response of people that say, I want out and I want now. Um, I think we spent a lot of time educating advisors over the last several years about the importance of planning, being deliberate about an exit, right? Uh, because then you can maximize and realize uh, and monetize uh, your life's work, basically. They deserve to have that opportunity. So uh, so being deliberate about that exit and planning for it is important. Um, the way we've, we've done it, uh, honestly, uh, we, we don't necessarily subscribe to this idea that, um, you know, you're going to put a bulletin board that everyone, all the buyers and sellers are going to put their interest out there and, and you're going to have a miraculous matchmaking it needs to be uh, for lack of a better term planned and brokered right so what yeah. we did was we created something called legacy builder uh last year that legacy builder solution um uh, helps an advisor uh first of all make sure they don't have an unplanned event right helps us give them some protection uh, and say look if if you get run over by the proverbial mug truck we'll come in and help you. You just got to give us the ability to help you, right? Give us the ability to come in and, and, and uh, uh, you know, take care of your family and your estate should that happen, uh, which is, you know, a, a fairly formal process. There's no commitments on their behalf. Um, uh, and then after that, um, we, we sort of help them maximize their business so that they can get the big, best price. And then separately, we've got a whole list of qualified buyers we qualify advisors to be aware about uh, of what it takes to buy a business. Um, you know, a lot of people don't realize that about 82% of these deals break. Oh, in, I know. Process, yeah, I see right? it. They never get consummated. So it's all about making sure that the buyer uh, is ready to buy. Um, the seller is um, prepared to sell to maximize value so that the price can be right. And then we come in and sort of provide the capital to, to accommodate it, right? That's, that's a piece of it. Uh, I do think that will expand. I think you'll see us get more, um, uh, get more deliberate about um, you know, being a, an exit source for advisors into ourselves. Um, the, the intent is uh, to take risk out of the equation, right? Ultimately, it's all about de-risking the, the, the sale for the advisor. It's really critical that we do right. that. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, a couple of announcements coming in in about 30, days. So I, uh, I, my marketing team will rip my head off if I, if I, I was gonna say, you can break something now if you want. That's okay. <laughs> they'll, they'll know it's me. They're like, ah, oh, Frank did it again. He's so pushy. <laughs> That's right. Well, we, we look forward to that. We look forward to that. So, you know, I, I guess the last thing, and this was a great conversation and really covered a lot of different areas. And I think that for, for my listeners, a lot of the comments that you uh, that you made were really about the things that about you're doing as, as a leader and and your and the firm is doing. Right. And so those are the things that really advisors should be looking at their own firms. And, and are they getting those types of things from their firm or not? Right. And so. This is like sort of the the direct pitch kind of moment, right? So if if I have a listener right now and they're thinking about leaving their firm, doesn't matter what kind of firm it is, right? What would you say are the are the biggest things they should um, why they should consider Satera? And and again, there's a, a whole family of firms and as you say, a community underneath the Satera brand. Um, but what would you tell them if you could, you know, if you could talk to them for a few minutes about why they should seriously consider Satera? as their destination. Yeah. Um, and I'm, and I'm going to, I'm going to go a step back and then answer that question if that's okay. 
Love it, yeah, absolutely. I, I think people need to realize in the recruiting process, um, uh, if you live in California, there's a good chance that at some point in your life you lived in a, in a track home, right? That's these model homes that get built all the same way, right? Um, uh, and and when, you're, when you're looking at firms, it's a little bit like that experience. You look at the model home, it's got an ocean view, it's got a huge backyard and, and, and a pool and it's decked out, right? But when you actually buy the house, you get in there and it, the view's not what it is. You walk out and it's a wall, right? So there's a little bit of that that goes on. And the importance to, to those that are listening is um, we, see, uh, uh, and, uh, we see a much better outcome for advisors uh, when they work with groups like yours because you're, it's just what you do for a living. You guys are in the business of understanding what each firm is good at. Right. Uh, and I think the first thing is people have to engage, um, uh, you know, w- w- with someone that can help them understand what the extras are, what comes for free, for lack of a better <laughs> description, right? Um, yeah. and, and, and look, because ultimately that will uh, a secure fit. Um, and that way, it's, that's, really dovetails into where we, where we like to differentiate our value proposition. Scale players all have the capabilities. There's a, there's, a, there's a bunch of us. We do a good job, all of us, right? Some may excel in one area versus another, but at the end of the day, you can draw a straight line between all of them. The question is, who is going to make sure that this is the right fit for you? And, and, and we take the opposite side of what you can do for somebody, by helping them navigate that sort of barrage of information that they get. Oh, yeah. And we say, look, we want to be relevant for the long term. When we bring on an advisor, we want to be relevant to that advisor. It's really, really important that we be relevant to them. So, because ultimately that's how you get the alignment. So we want to make sure that they're in the right community. Okay. That, um, that, that it's a fit with the core business model of that of that community, right? Whether it's tax professionals or, or banks and credit unions or a uh, sole proprietor or an ensemble. Um, uh, and that's sort of a, a key differentiator. And then finally, and most importantly, we take the time to listen because ultimately we don't wanna be telling you what you have to do. We wanna make sure that we're delivering to you what you need. And there's a big, big difference in that process, right? Oh yeah. Uh, and and um, you know, it's a it's an underserved skill, right? Listening. Uh, my wife tells me I don't do enough of it, uh, but uh, but I will tell you that we're we're really sort of zeroed in on it here at Cetera. And uh, ultimately, um, it, 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 one thing's for sure: if we can't deliver against what our advisor needs, we're going to tell them because um, the last thing I want is unhappy campus. And uh, and that's sort of a key part of our differentiation. Hopefully, that great. makes sense. Yeah, no, that's 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 great. I mean, I, I agree uh, wholeheartedly with that. And and thanks for the the. Uh, I'll send you the the fifty bucks for for plugging <laughs> us, but uh, that wasn't planned. But the, that's the reality: is that we one of the frustrations that 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 I have as a consultant is sometimes an advisor goes uh, on, goes about it themselves. And it's not to say that the firms that they're talking to are lying to them. They're just not being completely um, open with what they can do, what they can't do, what's going to happen, what's not going to happen, and you know, and and you can go down a real rabbit hole with. There's so many firms, and, and an advisor can spend you know a whole year talking to different firms. Their business will crater, and uh, and they'll end up at the wrong place, right? Um, yeah, and, and look, but, I, I don't think it's so much around sort of deception or anything like that. I think it's it's really about expertise, right? Yours is a profession, just like mine is. Um, it's about uh, uh, knowing what you know and knowing what you don't know, and knowing what to ask. And I think right. um, I think a lot of advisors, particularly those that have not been in the independent world, don't know how to navigate that process. And and uh, look, we we find that the time to make a decision is so much shorter when there's groups like yours in there. And we find that the probability of success is that much higher. Uh, so, so, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's a plug for you. And, and, um, I, I ask that people take it at face value. Um, 
there's definitely no doubt in my mind that they're better served through a third party. Awesome. And look, well, it costs I, me more money. So no, I know that's that's the thing that that they should know. But that's uh, <laughs> that's a testament to uh, your you know your um, your your belief in doing the right thing for for your your advisors. So thank you very much. Uh, but anyway, listen, that was a that was a great conversation. I really appreciate it. We talked a little bit about everything. Um, for for everyone listening, don't forget. Um, I, I did. I read this piece about asking for referrals and making it successful. Uh, Sotera has some great white papers. I, I I try to read as many as I can, and and this one was sort of really pertinent. Uh, if you want to if you want to DM me, um, I'll get you that uh, that uh, that white paper. It's really great. Uh, but Adam, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. We went a little bit longer, so I appreciate it. But great content. We can keep going. Um, for my listeners, thanks again for listening in. Uh, I appreciate it very much. I hope this was as valuable to you all as it was for me. Um, and with that said, I'll see you next time. Adam, thanks a lot. And I appreciate it. Take care. All right, Brad, thank you. appreciate it. And thank you for all you do for these advisors. Frank. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for watching Advisor Talk with Frank LaRosa. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out some of our other episodes. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And we will see you back here next week.